And Travis Wayne Goodsell. The Aftermath. So, to get you caught up, in case you hadn't been following me, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is panicked by me. They are the causal problem in my life, and I was forced to sue the church. And in so suing the church, they were offended, and sought retribution and retaliation to destroy me, even to murder me, disappear me from society, never to be heard of again, to erase me. <clears throat> but as you can see, I still keep getting out. It's the Purim principle. Next stop, Zion. Because I am, because of Joseph Smith, being born and raised in the covenant of the Church of Christ, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that usurped the Church from Joseph, I wanted to know what Joseph was talking about. And my uh, big interest was the Latter Days. After all, we're called Latter Day Saints. And so the everything to do with the Latter Days fascinated me. On my mission, I uh, used the purple highlighter marker to go through the whole Bible and highlight everything that had to do with the second coming, as I thought. And there's a lot. Much more than I expected. And so, <clears throat> Joseph Smith and his second vision, yeah, no wonder why he focused on Old Testament passages. And then there's that axe. <laughs> And by studying, I would eventually come to learn the importance of acts. And thus, cut off. I had originally believed it came from the Book of Mormon, because the Book of Mormon uses cut off. So I thought that's what he was referring to. Even though I had come to learn from Greek, that it's actually utterly destroyed in Acts. And so I knew something was up. And uh, I knew that there was a Christ on the learning of the Jews. And so, yeah, that Jesus problem was getting in the way. And come to find out yeah, it's because this church is the great abominable church. That's why Jesus is in the way, causing a stumbling block to our education in Mormonism. And then, on Friday, a dumbass Mormon sent a hate comment, and he used tear down in his comment in his beam and moat against me <clears throat> I have associative memory as a kid growing up I was forced to do a lot of memorization in school I didn't like that <laughs> and that built up in fourth grade and then in fifth grade as a fourth grade we were forced to memorize the preamble of the Constitution <laughs> then uh, it was either it must have been fifth grade because that's when I did the report on Idaho and so it must have been her Feskin who was forcing us to memorize each state in the Union and where they were located on a map 
and the capital for each. And that was it. I'd had all I can stand. I can't stands no more. <laughs> and I learned to do associative memory, which is a picture matching, similar to the little kids game, where you lift up a card, you see the picture on it, you put it back down, you lift up another card. If you got a match, you take the two off the board. <clears throat> and so it, it's easier to remember things this way. And so as long as it's not a, <laughs> a word problem, And so that's how I learned how to learn. And it was perfect for the anthropology of the ancient Middle East because I'm now able to uh, go into the languages of Paleo Hebrew and Egyptian and associate the meaning of the words and the letters. That's how I was able to decipher it so quickly because nobody else could. What the tradition is is Babylonian Semitic Hebrew. They don't go to Paleo Hebrew. They're claiming they go to Paleo Hebrew. They're lying to you. They don't know Paleo Hebrew. And if you actually check them you would see how horribly, awfully wrong it is. Every single claim is wrong for every single letter. They just botched it badly. And uh, it's William Foxwell Albright who's responsible. And it was because of Sir Alan Gardner who suggested, hey, let's deny science and use the acronym theory <laughs> to create a decipherment. Oh dear God. Why were they knighted as sirs? I will never know. But uh, this also helped with my scripture study. So I would read a passage in scripture and it the imagery would remind me of another passage in scripture that has the same pattern, associative memory. And so I was able to develop that with my scripture study superiorly. As uh, I ca caught on to the scriptures being able to explain and expound Mormonism uh, at a very young age. And, uh, and so I was already doing footnoting, annotating, as well as correcting the footnotes of the 1981 edition of the Triple, 1979 edition of the Bible. And so after I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew, I had searched around and got a hold of the supervisor that was involved in the priesthood uh, curriculum department at the time. That's what it was named. And uh, seeing if he had any knowledge of other translations of Joseph Smith from... Uh, from Hebrew. You know, like Pele El, mouth to God. And everybody thinks he's wrong. And they removed it from our temple. Hmm. So sad. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, knowing of my background as an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East 
and my decipherment of Paleo Hebrew. I was even published in uh, Bar Biblical Archaeological Review, in which he asked his readers to uh, translate an unknown uh, seal that had Egyptian uh, characters on it. Nobody had been able to decipher it. And so I was one who submitted a decipherment and he published it. <clears throat> but the church, right around the 2000s, were working on a revision of the footnotes, which became the 2009 Spanish edition because they replaced the Topical Guide and Bible Dictionary with a guide to the scriptures. And so, because he knew of me, that I'm all in with the ancient Middle East, they needed help with the Bible this time. They did it the other way around. They had already done the triple first, and now we're wanting to get to the Old Testament. And there just wasn't enough Mormons in the church who were skilled and knowledgeable in that field anymore. The times they are changing. <coughs> and so I was brought in. And because I was divorced, I had to have Jesus personally approve me. president of the church had to give his okay because back then divorced people were evil <laughs> and so I was brought into the project pick up papers bring them home work on them at home they gave me a beta version of the computer program that is better than the ones we got in the public because it included Hebrew and Greek in the computer program. And so this version, which is made available to all of you way back in the ROM days, only has the scriptures and the study aids. They don't have Greek and Hebrew, which is kind of a bummer. Everybody was disappointed that the church didn't make the beta version available for everybody. And so, with my associative memory, as I'm going through the footnotes, I'm getting visions of the other comparable scriptures. And I, with the program, I'm able to type in the key words, find what it was that I was associating, and correct the footnotes. Now, he kept telling me, you don't need to correct the footnotes. Just find the topical guide, Bible dictionaries, and if there's a gospel or a guide to the scriptures, put that in in their place. And IEs and ORs, you know, those will be for the BYU professors who know Hebrew. Right, Nelson? <laughs> and so I was denied putting in a lot of corrections that would enhance your study with the ancient language that's being used there, as well as Egyptian. Can you imagine how awesome it would be to look down in your footnotes and see that there's an Egyptianism? that a word is tied to an Egyptian meaning and therefore proves Joseph Smith is a translator of Egyptian? Wouldn't that be cool? No, apparently not. The church said no. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> because of how 
detailed I was, finding so many errors. And my they were astounded with how accurate and precise my work was. Plus, I was very, very fast. I was able to go back in and get new stuff during the week. As uh, most people were taking a whole week to do the two pages that they were given. And, uh, and so, because I was demonstrating how awesome I was, they decided, okay, wait a minute, other people are also starting to recognize that there are a lot of errors in the, the original version. And, uh, and so they divided us up into committee groups of four people. <clears throat> and so that the work that was left to be done would be done by the majority of the people working on the project. And there was about a hundred people or so, quite a number of people working on this. This is how fast I was and how slow they were because they don't have associative memory. You know, they're having to see a passage and then go through all of the suggested results of their word search in the computer program. And uh, uh, they, yeah. And so if you want to understand how different the closest you can come to is going through your footnotes in Isaiah. You will know which ones Bruce R. McConkie did. And it's blatantly obvious. <laughs> because Bruce R. McConkie was very knowledgeable in the scriptures. And I trumped them. They told me that I reminded them of Bruce R. McConkie. I am the modern-day Bruce R. McConkie. Just didn't marry a Fielding Smith, but I am a descendant of Hiram. <laughs> so I don't need to be adopted in, Bruce. I'm the original. <laughs> and so... Yeah, that's how good I was, and I was placed on the top committee that went over everybody's work, including what I had previously done. And so Paul, when he saw my documents, he's going, oh, this is you. Eh, no need to change that. Next. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's a lot of changes thanks to me. However, there's a lot of changes that didn't get made because there was some opposition and when there's opposition nothing gets changed right David and so I just want David to know that he's responsible for President Russell M. Nelson getting up at the pulpit of conference and botching interpretation and translation of the passages that I personally had recommended be changed and he, David, refused to let them be changed. So, with that background that took 20 minutes, And maybe we will do a separate video for the Micah thing. But this will just lead into it to encourage you to study Micah. Because, haven't you? Because that tear down led me to the associative memory. And I check on my computer, boom, found it, Micah. 
and there's cut off. And I went, that's what Joseph Smith is referring to in his second vision. And all of a sudden, the eyes of my understanding are wide open. <laughs> and so, I do that video about Micah. And it gets posted Saturday morning. <clears throat> Nelson is notified of my video. They're paying attention to everything I do because I was forced to sue them to save my life. And I failed, but they failed to destroy me. So they keep stalking me, they keep watching to see what I will post next. It's a shame that Mormons and ex-Mormons don't understand the symbiotic relationship we have. <laughs> because a lot of the things that have been going on in these latter days have been because of me exposing the church. They've been trained to get away with it in secret. And I keep exposing it. And they're pissed. And they keep trying to murder me. And silence me. And they've succeeded on YouTube. As you can tell. <clears throat> After all these years, and with the number of subscribers that I have, I'm only getting minimal views. That's because of YouTube and their algorithms that they're able to manipulate to target me specifically. And so only during conference time do the algorithms not work. <laughs> and so previous years, they've attacked me and lied specifically to shut me down from posting videos before conference. So, there is a war that is going on between us. And all I'm doing is trying to warn Mormons. And they are trying to cover up what the church is trying to do to hurt you. And destroy your lives. So it kind of makes YouTube and the church the bad guys. But Mormons don't see it like that. They see me as the bad guy instead. They don't understand why I'm picking on the church. I left the church, but I can't leave the church alone. <laughs> and all sorts of ridiculous, stupid comments. Not to mention the hate comments and the death threats. Because Mormons refuse to study. They participate in Mormonism rather than study Mormonism. And so how many of you studied? Micah. Because there's bombshells. I'm going to go over it in the next video. <laughs> and the prophets know this. That's why they had their emergency meeting on Saturday. That's why they canceled public appearances. They're going into hiding now. Because they know what Micah means. <laughs> I've been telling you this because I already knew that Jeremiah talked about it. And Matthew talks about it. But more specifically and graphically detailed, Micah talks about it. <laughs> And it's awesome. And so, yeah, Joseph Smith likewise knew and didn't name Micah on the list of scriptures, but used cut off. And that's where you're supposed to connect it to Micah. Because it's all about the latter days. All seven chapters 
are all about the latter days. And you're going to go, but there's Samaria and Jerusalem are going to be destroyed. Uh -uh, that's not Samaria and Jerusalem. Learning of the Jews. This is prophecy. It is a book of revelation of the latter days. And so you're going to see a certain birth that's referred to in Matthew, but in the context of the latter days. Just like Matthew, but when you use Christian goggles, you get screwed up. <clears throat> and so, yeah, there, I, I picked on a nerve here. The prophets are panicked. And, and they immediately reacted to protect themselves rather than come out and confess and do what I told them to do and that was keep their covenants it's still on my homepage it's the main video on the homepage <laughs> which Nelson responded with you need to be a peacemaker Travis <laughs> Oh, Nelson, you're so silly. Just give it up. <laughs>